Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. I've got a very special guest for me today. This is the Hustler Stand On Mower, and this is the GCI Turf Mowdown Showdown. Say, so, hey, be sure and like, subscribe, and share. Tell all your buddies, everybody you know in the lawn care industry. We got a very unique opportunity here to highlight uh, 14, I believe. Now it was 13. Now it's 14 of the biggest, baddest stand-on mowers in the in the lawn care industry. I want to make sure that everybody's aware this is not a paid promotion. I'm not getting paid to do this. Uh, I'm doing this on my own time, on my own dime. I understand that uh, some folks may have a, a bad experience with some of these particular brands. Of course, you got to expect that. Uh, you're going to get a lemon every now and then, right? But what I do ask is that you be respectful in the comments. Uh, for one reason and one reason alone, American hands build these mowers. And something you might potentially say could maybe affect a sale somewhere down the road and uh, you know trickle down to that uh, American family and uh, you know that, that may be a strange way of looking at it but it's my way of looking at it so I just ask that you be respectful in the comments so this is not a competition style review uh, there's not going to be any winners or losers uh, they're all winners in my book I think they're all fantastic machines but what we're going to do is go through a uh, a list, a bullet point list of um, different categories. In each category, I'm going to score the machine on a 1 to 10. And then uh, each machine goes out with three of different crew leaders of mine. And they're going to come back, report back to me, and score the machines in each category as well, 1 to 10. Now, I like to start these videos off with my one word. Okay, while well, everything's fresh on my mind, I just come out here and cut the grass yesterday mowed over here at my neighbor's was not able to mow at my father-in-law so we're uh, right now at this present time we're in a pretty yucky drought and we haven't had any rain in weeks uh, it's getting hot and the tall fescue is shutting down and uh, starting to really slow down growth and go dormant so uh, you know I hate it as much as you do I, I'm telling you I hate it worse than you do but I was not able to mow the other yard uh, simply because I'm not going to damage my father-in-law's turf uh, all for the uh, sake of a video. I respect him way more than that. So I'm, I'm just not going to do that. So uh, starting with the hustler and moving forward, uh, we're all going to still continue to mow uh, my neighbor Brian's yard because he's got irrigation in the front. The backyard is where his septic field is, so it grows regardless and then the very very back uh, gets a lot of shade uh, midday on so um that yard still kind of grows fairly good so we will continue to mow that obviously i'm irrigated here and back there so we'll continue to mow here so i do apologize for that now my one word uh while it's fresh just cut all this yesterday and got back on the machine rode up and down the road again got the feel for it and my one word for this hustler is going to be underestimated because i underestimated this machine in a huge way i mean big time uh, i was actually blown away by how this machine performs uh, I, it's kind of hard for me to put it into words so let, let's get into the categories and as we get into some of the talking about different categories uh, I'll kind of kind of you know, talk through all this and, and by the end of the video you'll understand more why I was actually blown away by this machine this is a very very good mower. So without further ado, let's jump right into the first category, which is bad to the bone. And that deals with uh, the aesthetics of the mower, uh, how, it, how it looks, and then the actual build quality. Now I've kind of made this pretty clear. Uh, you know, I'm the muscle car guy, okay? The hot rod, uh, burning the tires up down the road. I'm that dude, okay? Uh, I like, like fast cars. I like something that looks meaty 
and beefy and i like my equipment to look the same way i like for it to have a stance of you know i'm i'm getting ready to attack the yard i'm going to jump in there get it done and just 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 annihilate the grass and and when i look at this mower uh, I, don't, I don't i don't see that i mean I, I i see a good looking machine okay it's clean tight lines uh it, it, it looks good uh, but in my opinion you know it, it doesn't really fit the ideal look now do you buy something on based on how it looks oh, absolutely not <laughs> you, you you don't buy equipment based on how it looks you buy equipment uh, based on how it performs and how much money it makes you in your in your business at the end of the day you know it doesn't matter how it looks but i wanted to just add a an aesthetics look uh just kind of give you my take on the appearance of the machine so um you know it, it doesn't really have that in your face i'm gonna cut your head off look so in the aesthetics category we're gonna give it an eight okay so the next uh category is build quality and you know made in america bam right off the bat so you know you're getting something good uh, as far as the welds go and all that and and it looks really good everything seems to be nice and tight and clean and again some of these welds i just cannot look at them and tell if a robot welded it or if american hands welded it uh, the, the thing is just very very well made and of course we're going to find this to be the case across the board i mean a lot of these machines they're you know the build quality they're just good it's good uh and you know it's going to be hard to nitpick it to death and find something that's just terribly off about the build quality now i do have one uh I think we can put this in build quality. Uh, it's going to go back to probably the ease of use category for the uh, the height adjustment here, and not at all pleased with that. Uh, and I just don't know how else to say it. And what I mean is is when I would engage and drop the deck down, and I'm mowing, and I'm going across bumpy terrain at a, at a good pace this deck will not stay down it will you hit a bump and the deck wants to bounce up and and go left and right and just da -da 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 bounce well i hit some bumps it was so hard that it kicked it all the way back up and locked it in the upright position which is no good and heck i made a couple of passes before i even noticed it and i had to stop drop it back down keep going so I don't think that necessarily fits in the build quality. I think it's more of a function issue, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit more. So we're, we're gonna leave that out of build quality. But as far as the overall build quality goes, I have to give it a nine because it's, it's, it's built fantastically. It's fantastically a word. All right, so the next category, let's go to the toolbox. And this is going to be ease of maintenance. How easy is it to work on the machine? And I'm, I'm speaking mainly of basic maintenance, uh, changing blades, changing oil, uh, hydraulic fluid, maybe hydraulic filter, replacing the battery, changing blades. Of course, changing the blades across the board is the same with all of them. You lift the front end up in some way, well, whatever that might be, and then you, you know, get up under the mower, take the blades off, sharpen them, balance them, clean them, put them back on, drop the mower back down. So that's gonna be pretty much the same, but let's look at how easy or how difficult it would be to, to change this belt in case it breaks. Of course, when we're doing this, I always like to drop the deck all the way down because that gives you the best access to the belt. All right, so first thing, right off the bat, this dang muffler is in the way. Okay, it's kind of difficult to get down in here. Most of these things will have a tensioner pulley on them where you can pull the pulley to come in here to the side. And I can, oh, that is easy. Wow. That's actually, uh, this may be the easiest one yet. 
So I'm, I'm coming in from the side. I'm basically putting my hand on top of this pulley and pushing. And I can take my other hand, I can easily get that belt off. Whoa. Well, Hustler, I gotta say that's pretty dang cool right there. <laughs> that is about as simplistic as it gets. Matter of fact, let me bring you down here. I wanna bring you down here a little closer and show you this, cause you need to see just how simple this is. My hand goes right here, pushes forward, and look at that. Look at how easily that belt comes off. Uh, wow, I'm, I'm actually, I'm extremely impressed with that because that is by far the easiest belt changing, you know, whatever you want to call it, that I think I've ever seen on a mower. That's pretty impressive. And I know it's something simple, okay? I get it, it's something simple. But if you're in the field, you're sweating like a dog, it's the end of the day, your belt breaks, you don't want to fight this stuff. My gosh, you do not want to fight it because it just aggravates the snot out of you. You want something simple, push it, take the belt off, put a new one on, and keep getting it so you can go home to your family. That's impressive. So come right here to the air filter, extremely standard. Uh, you know, for most all of the machines, you got an inner and an outer, and they're super easy to get to because pretty much all these mowers is going to be right sitting on top of the engine, so it's easy to get to. We come over here to the side, the oil filter is just, I mean, how much easier do you want it? I mean, it's right here, absolutely nothing around me to, uh, hinder me from either you know locking down with my hand and, and, and taking it off or getting a oil wrench on there and taking it off. Here's the oil drain tube coming out of the bottom of the block. That's like a hex head uh, style bolt or something. You simply unscrew that and your oil would drain out of here. Uh, again, I don't know if Hustler sends a connection tube to, to slide over this so that you can get the oil out away from the, the machine. But you can come in here, but you can come in here with an oil pan. I mean, it's more than enough room to get a low profile oil pan in here and just let it sit there. My biggest complaint when, when these companies bring this extension out and leave it is you, you do have to fight you know, even though this has got some room in it to work with, you still have to fight getting something up in here to you know drain the oil. I just think it should be standard across the board. There should be some type of tubing that slides over this so that you can bring your drain tube and set it out here and drain the oil out here instead of you know on the machine itself or or you know having something up in the machine to get it out and hustler may send that in you know the the welcome pack or whatever you get with the machine they may have a tube included if they don't you need to include one okay right here uh, we don't have to go far here's hydraulic filter i mean right here it's simple to get to, like incredibly easy. Uh, I really like the access to that. Now let's come back here and see how easy it is to get and all of this stuff. Okay, you know, this, this, oh, okay, here we go. All right, that comes off and you have two, looks like half inch uh, right here, let me go get a let me get a wrench. I want to take that off and see what's behind there. There's actually two more down here. All right, let's see now. What do we have in here? There's really no advantage uh, to taking that off. You can see right here. Here's the clutch uh, pulley right here. You can see here's the belt pulley right here, and you can actually get that off from the, the side of there like I showed you. So I don't really see anything you would need to get to back here other than flipping the, the padded rest uh, just to get to your hydro fluid right there in case you need to top it off or add some or whatever. One thing I would recommend to Hustler, you can see uh, this, that's a, I think it's a 5 16 
uh, right there, uh, bolt and, and this uh, big, you know, this is a molded, uh, I don't know what you call these things, it's, it's just a molded butt with a you know handle grip right here. These two top right here, they fit right in there. It's the exact same size. Uh, why don't you put these here, Hustler, and put you some type of a lip down here so that when you reinstall this, it slides down in a lip. Then your customers, all they have to do is put one of these on that side right there like so and then put one on this side over here and then you don't have to keep up with a half inch wrench or you don't have to take a chance on losing four bolts and four washers which would you, know, you drop that in my yard you're never going to find that and of course here's your battery box that simply lifts up and it's got two uh, looks like seven sixteenths uh, carriage bolts right there you would pop out there's a brace in here that kind of locks the battery down pop it out and put your new one in if you needed to so really easy to get to so ease of maintenance um, oil is easy to get to hydraulic fluid was easy to get to the belt changing the belt was just stupid easy I cannot I still can't get over how easy that is and uh you know that's coming from somebody seen a lot of different uh belt systems on a lot of different pulley systems whether it, you know be mower decks or whatever and this one is hands down has to be one of the if not the easiest to change that i've ever come in contact with batteries easy to get to i honestly can't find a fault to be honest with you um I, I gotta give I gotta give ease of maintenance a 10. Um, it, it's very difficult to get a 10 with me. I assure you of that because I nitpick every single detail. And I mean, I, I don't have a reason not to give it a 10 because I can't find a flaw in the ease of maintenance. So it gets a 10 in that category. All right, so let's go over the ingenuity, the design, uh, you know, controls, ergonomics, functionality, easy use, the comfort of all the controls, uh, high to cut adjustment ease, um, fuel tank. So the controls, uh, they're they're okay. They're not ideal uh, for me. And again, you know, I want to stress that all this is my personal opinion and personal take on these machines. Uh, you know, somebody else may love this setup, but I, I personally don't like the controls, especially the layout. Let me explain. So I am a left-hand parking brake, right-hand height adjustment guy. That's just the way I am because I, I like that simply for the fact is if I'm on the go and I'm getting it done quickly, I can go one, two quickly one two instead of one this is the parking brake up here and you can see when you drop it down it drops way down out of the way so now I have to go one come back up two it's just much more comfortable for me to go left hand right hand so now you know why I like that layout uh, and then when I'm on the machine I pretty much have to lean over to grab the parking brake and pull it back up. Of course, you can you can slam it down. It's got a good lock on the tire, by the way. But to pull it back up, you have to kind of bend over to get it. So, uh, like I said, I prefer the parking brake on the left. Uh, the actual key is super easy to get to. The throttle, super easy to get to. The stinking PTO is in my opinion in a bad spot because i have to do this number i have to go in like this or i have to fish i have fairly decent sized hands so i have to fish my hand between this back rest bar and the key to get in there i have to kind of turn my hand upside down to pop it like that to turn the pto on so I've never been a fan of having to, to go fishing for the PTO and to reach down in between the handlebars to pull it up. Um, a super simple solution would be to move the thing back an inch. That's it, an inch. And then if it's right directly beside the key, 
you can actually take your finger and just pop it right on up no problem and you don't you don't have to go fishing for it the throttle is in a great location i don't have to move and i can simply throttle up throttle down the key wonderful location all i have to do is just reach down no effort at all to get to it high to cut adjustment uh it is very simple to get to and it's also very simple to you know raise and lower there's, there's not much effort in there let's lower it down a little bit now this bar right here is a little tough to get in but that's simply because of the paint or the powder coating is inside the holes once that wears out that that pin will go in super easy I'm putting minimal effort into this, but I do have one issue with this that's driving me up a wall, is look, the dang grip wants to, look, it's nothing on, it's nothing on here to, to lock the grip in place. So every time you go to, so every time you grab it and you go to let it down, you know, the force of your hand keeps sliding this up just a little bit, okay? And then, if it's up, you have to put even more pressure on the button to get it past the slop. See the slop right here? That little bit of slop I'm talking about? So when you mash it, you have to mash through that slop to get it back up. And that's just agitating, to be honest with you. Um, um, my opinion very poor design right here this should either have some type of a glued or I don't know if they put velcro on these things or not maybe glue is the right word some type of a glued thing on here so that this thing just doesn't automatically just pop off like that that shouldn't happen that needs to be glued on or something done differently right there the handlebars itself um you know i'm kind of torn on this to be honest with you uh you know that uh in general uh they come in two different ways all mowers stand on mowers come on two, in two different ways there's either a rigid bar front rigid bar back and you push toward the rigid bar or you pull backwards toward the rigid bar uh, or uh, some mowers have the rigid bar in the middle and have two sets of controls. A set of controls up here and a set of controls back there where you pull back to the rigid bar in the middle or you push to the rigid bar in the middle. Uh, you know, anybody that's been around mowers knows, knows all this. It's nothing new. Um, to me personally, I don't care which one it is, the style. It really doesn't matter to me as long as they're comfortable. And to me, this isn't super comfortable, okay? Uh, I find it a little bit. Now, if I look down in here. Now, uh, now if I look down in here, there is adjustability, okay? Down inside here, there are two, looks like half inch. Let's adjust it right quick and see what happens. Look, that's 9 sixteenths. Let me go get a 9 sixteenths. All right, so this one's a little bit tricky to get to. It would probably help if I had a socket. Now I'm tightening it. It would probably help if I had a socket and a ratchet to get down in this one because it's kind of hard to get to it with a normal wrench from the bottom. Wow, they put the mojo on that. All right, let's see if that done it. Yep, there we go. Okay, so we do have adjustability here. So I'm going to go fully compressed with the hydraulic levers okay now that feels quite a bit better that feels quite a bit better i should have paid attention before i operated the machine and i should have seen that down in there and i should have loosened this up before i used it 
All right, so now that I've got that adjusted, uh, that actually feels quite a bit better. I mean, much, much better. Still got a little bit of an issue with it. The back bar is only, I'm gonna say that's about six inches wide. Now, when I operate a machine, uh, I like typically like my thumbs to kind of come right here to the uh, where the drive handles meet or, or end. And I'll stretch my hands out and I'll, I'll wrap my fingers around the, the front bar and that way I can use my thumb to also push along with the palm of my hands. Now, when I'm doing that and when I go to back up, I have to actually adjust my hands and pull them to the inside to be able to grip this back bar to be able to pull this backwards. Now obviously you can just freehand it and do it like that. I like a stable bar to work against. So I would have loved to see this bar come out wider so that it fits my hands so that when my hands are spread out like this I can come straight back and then I have something to, to grab hold to and to manipulate the controls like that. Uh, but other than that, one little thing where I think this bar could be wider, uh, but then again, you're going to get into your key and throttle area, and then you would have to kind of go under the bar to crank the, crank the machine, or you'd have to go down through to do that. So I don't know you know come up with a teeth I don't know I don't know what the fix for that is I just don't like this narrow uh, stop bar like that because when I go to back up I have to pull my hands inward to do that and you know you can get used to it over time like anything else but uh, we're, we're trying to trying to make a perfect machine uh, here you know what I mean so the ergonomics on the machine uh, the way it fits my hands um, I'm gonna give it an 8.5. The functionality layout, you know, how you get to everything, how everything works and all, you know, like I said, um, you know, I hate to kind of be biased on this, but I'm a, I'm a left park and brake guy and a, a right height adjustment guy. And it's just a nuisance to me personally when, when this park and brake is down here and I have to bend over to get it. You know, not lazy. I don't mind bending over, but uh, I just feel like with the brilliant minds we have engineering these machines, they can design things to where you're you're in the cockpit of the machine, and you don't have to do any manipulation of your own body to get to every control available to you. That that's my mindset. I, I feel like we're smart enough as manufacturers to be able to put the layout of the control where the operator don't have to do anything out of the ordinary or do anything uncomfortable or inconvenient to be able to, to make the machine function and that to me that's just a little bit of a hassle to have to bend over to do that and then of course this thing right here the way that thing slides up so the functionality and the layout uh we'll give it an eight so the ease of use uh that kind of goes uh into you know everything i just said um everything is easy to use it's easy to get to except the parking brake pto and then this this sleeve thing wants to keep coming off um ease of use i'm gonna give it an eight i'm looking for a usb port uh, some of these machines have a, a usb port or like old-fashioned cigarette lighter plug-in there's not one on this machine so if you need to charge your phone you're out of luck height of cut adjustment ease uh how easy is it to manipulate the height of cut uh it's pretty dang easy uh the 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 motion as far as up and down is very simple this thing gets on my nerves i cannot tell you how bad that bothers me if i owned this machine that would be super glued i would take that off put some super glue two-way tape like you do a golf grip or something and that would not be moving if that if this were my machine um so the actual ease of how to cut um if I factor this in, because this does play into it as this thing works up and you have to 
put more pressure and more force to push the button down because you're you're, you're fighting against this little bit of slop right here um, you know if it wasn't for that I would give it a nine and a half that's how easy it is to manipulate up and down but because this is such a big deal to me that that's a big time flaw that could easily be fixed i mean eat, put some glue on it and stick it on there done deal uh, i'm gonna give it an eight and a half so let's talk about this fuel tank uh you know i i prefer dual tanks you know one on each side that way it kind of equals out your balance and that kind of thing obviously there's a battery over here so they can't put dual fuel tanks on it the one thing that irks me about this fuel tank that I've never had to deal with on any stand no more I've ever been on is the height of it. it it's a tall fuel tank. So I'm 6'1", and for my height, when I'm standing here, you know, knees straight, uh, platform depressed, and I'm operating the machine, when I have a line of sight, straight to the corner of that deck okay why do i need a line of sight to the corner of that deck well when i'm edging out around my property around the beds in my neighbors when i'm going down the fence line i want to be able to see the edge of that deck so i can see how close i'm getting well in order for me to do that i have to do this in some of the mowing footage you'll see me leaning up and i have to do that to get this fuel tank out of my sight so that I can see the deck and that's agitating that that really bugs the snot out of me because I'm just so used to getting on the mower and mowing and just kind of glancing down every now and then to see where the edge of my deck is so to make sure I'm following my lines you know whatever I'm going around but now I have to lean forward and come back lean forward and come back now once you get out in the yard and you're kind of mowing your straight lines your stripes it's not that big of a deal because a lot of the times I'm just looking dead straight in front of me and I might glance down every once in a blue moon and, and catch that cut line uh, or I may look a little bit in, in front of this left caster just to catch my cut line out of the corner of my eye but for the most part I'm looking dead straight because I'm, I'm wanting to run a straight line for straight stripes so I've got a target at the other end of the pass that I'm constantly looking at when I turn around I pick another target at the end of my pass and so basically I'm holding it straight and talking about holding it straight this machine was incredibly easy to run a dead straight line I mean dead nut straight uh, very very simple to do that but uh, I'm not giving scores to the fuel tanks because there's no way to score a fuel tank but I do want to make that a point that this this was aggravating I'm, when I look down I'm looking straight at the gate the gas gauge here and I want to see the edge of my deck all right so let's go look at the uh, range of height of cut uh, what's the lowest setting the highest setting and let's go look up under the deck and check that out and then we'll come back over here first thing off the bat is I'm seeing this flange right here uh, I don't know if that it's not adjustable no nah, it's not adjustable there's only one hole back there uh, but it is removable uh, what that actually does uh, I have no idea I, I do know when it's on here it channels the, the clippings out obviously but uh, you would think with two bolts in it it would be able to be taken off for a reason I'm um, not completely sure about that that's something we'll have to look at hustler hustler.com or uh, you know go to their website or talk to a dealer about that and even if there is anything significant about it, it there may not be it may just be a design thing uh just the way it's made uh let's see i see right here these uh i don't know what you call these things donuts or something of course here's your uh bolt to take the blades off uh this definitely has to come off with that and goes back on i assume with the uh when you put the blades on but not completely sure why that is there but it is there uh i did notice this now i think this is the first mower 
that we've had looking under the deck that there's a grease fitting. Uh, I could be wrong about that with the other, the, the previous mowers, but uh, I haven't, I didn't notice any to my knowledge and uh, usually that kind of thing sticks out like a sore thumb. So uh, if I missed that with another mower, I apologize, but the Hustler does have grease fittings. Other than that, uh, looks pretty, uh, you know, typical, like, like, like most mower decks, pretty typical of the design here. Do have a little bit of space up under here, a little bit of gap. Deck looks to be uh, very solidly made. Um, I don't see any issues up under here. Just looks like a pretty standard deck to me. Uh, I don't, nothing really sticks out to me except this piece right here that's interesting that's going to make me want to dive in and find out exactly what that is all right so here's the range of height of cut so we go from uh one and a half whoa all the way up to five and a half wow look at that that's uh to my knowledge i think that's the highest uh the tallest height of cut so far let's drop it all the way down let's check it out all right so we're down here on an inch and a half and you can see that's just a touch off not not bad it's actually cutting a little bit high all right let's go to the three inch setting and looks like the same scenario but considerably less uh, difference that is you can see there's the three inch I'm raising it up to the three all right that's sitting flat on the ground it's cutting about three and not even three and a quarter uh, so it's at the three inch mark it's really not off but just a fraction well, let's go ahead and check this one at four inches and see now if you notice that's a little bit tough getting in and out all that is is the paint right there where they paint it or powder coat it once that wears off that thing that pin will slide in and out easily kind of the same thing at four inches it's just a smidgen off i mean not even a sixteenth of an inch i don't even know that i would call that being off it's so daggone close and let's check the five and a half inch mark to see if it actually cuts at five and a half inches Look at that, holy cow. Look, my ruler won't even go up that high. Uh, just eyeballing that, you know, the five is right there. And yeah, I'd say that's five and a half inches. That's really cool that uh, it's got the ability to cut that high. I don't know what you'd want to mow that high, but it's got the ability to, and it's accurate. So the height of cut range, you can see, it goes from an inch and a half all the way up to five and a half, five and a half inches, which is really, really cool. Uh, for those of you that mow that high, uh, the height of cut wasn't off, but just a smidgen. Uh, so the height of cut accuracy, um, we'll give it a nine. Uh, you know, you can't get a 10 unless it's perfect, right? So uh, you get a nine on that. And again, I just wanna make this clear. And I've said it in all the other videos, but there are adjustments on these decks right here. Now, whether or not the factory sets that or a dealer sets that, I don't know. I have no clue who does that, but somebody's a quarter inch off. So now let's talk about one of everybody's favorites battle of the blades so now we're going to talk about the cut quality how well it, uh, it side discharges and how well it stripes uh, let's kind of go reverse order because i want to spend a little time on one of these striping is really good okay this is going to kind of feed back to my one word about i underestimated this machine uh you know i've never i've never been on a hustler 
th this is my absolute first time cutting turf with a hustler mower and you know you kind of get a, a mindset and it kind of you know kind of locks in about different things and you just kind of think a certain way about a certain thing and you, i never associated hustler with being uh, a super striping mower uh, or a very high quality of cut just I don't have a reason for that I just never associated the two I underestimated it big time the stripes this mower puts down uh, no striping kit no factory striping kit it lays down some really really nice lines okay of course you're 100 percent going off my opinion on that because we're filming in all kind of different conditions the sun's not shining in the exact same way every time so you're strictly going to have to go on my word on that but the the striping capabilities i'm gonna give it a nine and a half because it stripes really really good the side discharge uh got a nice uh healthy opening over here i did notice uh the way this mower discharge is pretty typical the the, the 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 clippings come out the side and kind of fan out uh leaving a, a nice straight edge leading edge of grass clippings and i was actually quite impressed i was very impressed by the way it scatters and distributes the clippings e evenly you know some mowers kind of chunk the clippings and throw little balls of grass out that get kind of balled up under there and kind of chunks it out all this mowing conditions are identical it's all perfectly dry grass so they're, they're, it's being cut under the same conditions and i was quite impressed i was very impressed with the way it side discharges uh i'm gonna give it a score of a nine for that now something i really underestimated is the quality of cut I, I really underestimated this mower. I kind of didn't know what to expect. Um, I knew it was going to cut good. All these mowers are basically brand new. So all I'm going to cut good, but for somebody that's been looking at turf for 20 years, I can micromanage that quality of cut. I severely underestimated this. Right off the bat, um, cut quality is going to get a 10. Cut quality gets a 10 this mower cuts incredibly clean i mean uh it's probably one of the better cutting mowers i've ever been on in my entire life i was thoroughly impressed <laughs> i was very impressed i made the first pass around the borders and i started looking back and i was like holy cow this is just so incredibly tight i mean i couldn't go out there with a pair of scissors and cut it as tight as this mower cuts so i was uh thoroughly impressed uh, with the cut quality i have absolutely zero complaints about that even back here in the bluegrass uh, it cut tr uh, tremendously well uh back there in the backfield area of my neighbors full speed as fast as i can run the machine and stay on it uh, it cut very very good uh, I, I gotta give it a 10 on cut quality hats off to you hustler this thing cuts like a champion all right so next category smooth operator this is going to go over the overall comfort of the machine and the ride quality um uh comfort of the machine it's it's a fairly comfortable machine that now you're going to find this across the board with all stand-ons okay i've yet to be on one that rides like a cadillac they just i don't know why they don't put some type of suspension or something on these machines to make them more comfortable uh, and make the ride quality better that they don't maybe maybe this series of videos will help someone to up their game and they'll start doing that I don't know uh, overall comfort of the machine wouldn't bad at all I do have one uh, minor complaint other than you know this kind of plays into the comfort with me having to do this and this thing sliding up up and me having to dig in here you know other than that um the only other thing as far as the actual comfort of me goes is this pad back here it's a little mushy okay it's it's when i would 
go down the ditch and and or turn around or whatever and I'd, I'd have to dig dig my knees into the pad i can feel the metal what is this that's probably wood maybe a wood backing or some type of a plastic backing or something but when i would have to bend down i could feel my knees digging into that because the cushion is not very thick and it's not not very uh uh rigid i guess not rigid what's the dang word i'm looking for it's soft that's what i'm looking for it's soft this padding should should have a little bit more you know meat behind it so that when you dig your knees into it you're not feeling that the backing of the backing board uh so overall comfort of the machine um uh considering p putting all this into play i uh, i gotta give it a eight I got, I got to give it an eight and a half on the comfort. Okay, the overall comfort of the machine. Uh, when I'm obviously when I'm on my yard on the bluegrass, you know, I graded these so they're nice and tight, and you don't really have any comfort issues. But that that's not realistic. Okay, most yards aren't going to be graded to this standard. And when you get in a yard that's not graded like that, and it's all humpy and bumpy, uh, it's it. You know, the comfort kind of comes into play and you know uh i just i can't i can't give it no more than eight and a half uh simply because uh it's just not a super duper comfortable ride overall ride quality uh it's pretty bad uh, if you ask me it's not good at all and again this is going to be kind of an ongoing thing across the board with most of these stand on mowers because none of them really ride good at least i haven't been on one yet that rides that's good if i do you're gonna you, i'm gonna flip out okay i'm gonna go crazy on camera because i because I, I really want something that rides really nice uh here here's the deal with the ride quality if you hit a bump going full speed uh, which i did back there in the back over here the front tires come off the ground that high uh, six or eight inches it happened to me twice uh, and that's mowing at full speed uh, the the mower deck th this thing right here it would it would bounce so hard that this this handle would bounce up and it would lock in place lock in the upright position and then you gotta stop drop it back down again get back to work um, you know so uh, yes you can mow slower absolutely you can i agree with that 100 percent. and that, that would never happen okay and it would actually ride much better but when we're mowing my neighbor's yard we're timing that okay and that is a be productive get it done i want to get done leave this customer with a wonderful job and i want to go to the next one so i can make more money okay that production that's what I'm going after when I'm when I'm over in my neighbor's yard. So I'm not necessarily concerned about mowing it at one mile an hour. You see what I'm saying? So the overall ride quality of this machine, uh, I'm gonna give it a seven and a half, seven point five, because it's just it just I, I don't like it to be honest with you. So let's talk about the horsepower category, and that's dealing with the engine up here. A Kawasaki FX850V, uh, fuel injected, EFI fuel injected, zero issues with the power. It, this motor, this engine, powers this machine effortlessly. Uh, not one time did it bog down. I actually let the fescue and the bluegrass got a little bit behind schedule on my mowing, and it got a little bit tall, and and it cut through it like hot butter, like a knife with hot butter. It just, absolutely no issues there. So for this particular mower and this particular engine right here, uh, I gotta give it a 9.5 for, for, for power because it, it's definitely putting the rubber to the road. Now let's talk about the hydraulics. Uh, go into fuel sensitivity and responsiveness. And you know, I'm a hydraulics nerd. You've heard me say this over and over again. I love things that are super sensitive to the touch uh, that have a really good feel to them. And, and when I move the controller, I want the machine to obey what I say. Okay, when, when, I, when I move the controller, I want it to be instant. When I'm running a backhoe or a track hoe, when I move the controller, 
move the controllers, move the arm of the machine. I want it to be instant. I don't want slop. I don't. I don't want a little bit of play, and then the the arm start moving. I want. I like instant. Okay. Some people like softer controls than that, and to each his own. That's completely fine. But uh, this little category, this category on hydraulics right here, is going to go back to underestimated. I'm going to say this out loud. These are some of the best hydraulics I've ever operated. Uh, the sensitivity is there. The feel is there. The responsiveness is there. These hydraulics are absolutely fantastic. I, I have, I, I can't say anything bad about them. They're, they're that dang good if you are a type of person that you know wants that immediate response if i'm turning around you know if i've got one foot forward and i'm i'm coming one foot back and i want instantaneous response you will get this out of this machine because it's instant as soon as i touch the control it's instant as soon as i put pressure i can feel the, the force of the hydraulics working against this and when it's when it's running when the machine's running it's even more prevalent because all this kind of tightens up because it's got hydraulic fluid running through the lines but the hydraulics are so incredibly sexy <laughs> i just I can't think of a better word to say. The hydraulics on this Hustler stand no more are phenomenal. So hydraulics, feel, sensitivity, and responsiveness. Feel, 10, responsiveness, 10, and sensitivity, definitely a 10. The linkage and all, whoever adjusted this thing uh, from the factory or from uh, you know the dealer before I got my hands on it, hats off to you you done a fantastic job of getting the hydraulics dialed in just right for me uh, I, I can't I know you're ready for me to shut up about the hydraulics but I just can't get over how dang good they actually are so across the board it gets a 10 uh hands down no question about it of course we've got to do uh, uh one of my favorite categories is hold my sun drop and unfortunately there's nowhere for me to put a drink on here uh absolutely nowhere which stinks what if i'm thirsty while i'm mowing and i want a drink i mean why can't we get a cup holder somewhere so i need a cup holder okay hustler get me a cup holder and to wrap this up uh with what i'm calling the verdict and that's going to kind of be in general my overall thoughts of the machine it goes back to my one word underestimated i highly highly under underestimated this machine uh it really shocked me at how well it performs how well it cuts uh side discharge everything about the machine as far as performance is absolutely top notch uh so hats off to you hustler for making such a phenomenal machine now i'm gonna go out on a limb and i'm gonna i'm gonna say some things right here i'm, I'm talking directly to hustler if you guys are watching this um, if i had my way and i could change some things on this machine I would move the parking brake left side. I would move the PTO back down when I get to it a little bit easier. I would somehow widen this back bar right here. I would go dual fuel tanks that are a little bit lower, relocate the battery, obviously fix this problem where this thing bounces back and locks in when you're mowing at a, at a high speed. And you know, to me, I don't think those are major. I don't manufacture mowers, so I don't know what all goes into you know these subtle little changes. Uh, I know the gas tank would be a pretty big one, uh, so there probably have to be some design changes on it. But if, and I'm gonna say this out loud, if Hustler could make those few little subtle changes, like I just mentioned, um, I, I think it would be a perfect mower. I really do. Uh, th those minor changes are 
again, my personal opinion, how they would fit me as a person and an operator. Uh, but I also feel like they would fit a whole lot of other people uh, as operators. And if those little small changes could somehow magically be made without changing anything else, don't change anything else on the mower. Ease of maintenance, cut, don't, don't be messing with that. That's spot on. If we could make some changes right around here, I swear, I have no problem saying this would be a perfect mower because it would be in my opinion. So that is my take on the Hustler Stand On Mower. So hey, like, subscribe, and share. Tell all your buddies. We got several more machines to go through and we're gonna critique all of them uh, in the same fashion. And I'm gonna give you as non-biased, as straightforward of a uh, you know review as I possibly can. So as always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later.